This is Zechariah 13, verses 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Lord Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord Yahweh is my power. Kal halal Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching and pushing this truth, this gospel, throughout the four corners of the earth. And greetings also to the few sisters that tune in to these video epistles. We've got some big words in our title today. Extraction, deliverance, extermination, and destruction. Extraction, deliverance, extermination, and destruction. Yeah, big words. So I need to break them down. So how can we, how simple can we get? An extraction, well, to remove some things like, I suppose pulling a teeth, they usually use that word, distract. Deliver, well, we know what deliverance means. You deliver from one place to the next. Exterminate, well, that's another word for destroy. And destruction, well, we've said it. So we've gotten over our big words. Yeah. What's this lesson about? Well, the dual nature, the duality that's been put in the earth by our power, whose name is Yahweh, and his only begotten son, his name is Yahweh Shai. Duality is at play here, as it is in all things. Surgical strikes are about to take place. And as we read in Zechariah, two parts, the Hebrew Israelites, so in every three, two will be destroyed. They're rejected on this side of the destruction, annihilation that's going to take place. It refers to the land, that being a land of Babylon the Great. So we don't, it's not written what's going to be the kind of percentages around the world, but you can only imagine what that could be from place to place. So at the same time that the extraction and deliverance is taking place, an amount of extermination and destruction is also going to be taking place at the same time. So this is a dual nature and we want to bounce backwards and forwards in some scriptures between these two destruction and deliverance, extraction and extermination. That's what this lesson is about. These two dichotomies that's going to be taking place between the elect, the remnant elect who will be saved and the wicked who are slated for destruction. You could even use another big word, annihilation. Seems we've eaten the dictionary this morning. All right, so let's talk about what is it they're being saved from, what's happening prior to that. So Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 and 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. He who, the elect, the remnant elect. Daniel 12 and 1, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. 
and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. We're looking at this dichotomy here, the duality of what is about to take place. What about Second Esdras 2? Second Esdras 2 and uh, where are verse 26 to 30. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, said the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, said the Lord. Yahweh. See, we're getting some assurance here. That when all hell breaks loose, if your name is written, you've been selected from before the foundation of the earth, then you will be saved. I think we want to stay in Second Esdras. And let's go. Second Esdras 16. At the end of that chapter. See if we can cut it down a bit here. 67. Behold, the Most High himself is a judge. Fear him, leave off from your sins, and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them that be had in derision and in reproach, and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They're coming for us, brothers and sisters. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Verse 74. Hear, O my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Hawa Power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. We're looking at this dual nature of what is about to take place. Where next? Isaiah, I think, Isaiah 10 and 20 to 22. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote him. That's to say, we're not going to depend on this Edomite, the so-called white man in the scripture is referred to. He is his proper national nationality. It's the Edomite. That's who he is. We're not going to rely on him anymore. But shall stay upon the Lord Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. See, the lies have run their course. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. See, for though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Let's just turn the page here. Isaiah 11 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. 
Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim, the two tribes, the two kingdoms coming back together. Verse 14, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west, and they shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon, listen to these nations here, Edom, so-called white man, and Moab, the so-called Chinese, and, and the other nations there, Korea, and so on. And the children of Ammon, that's the Japanese, shall obey them. Verse 15, and the Lord Yahweh shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. He's going to dry up all those lands so we can travel you see, freely take away the power from the sea. We're looking at this dual nature of what's getting ready to happen. See, this awaken, this awakening that is taking place is leading to something magnificent. What about Matthew? What did Yahawashai have to say about these troubling times? And what is he getting ready to do about it. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of darkness shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, Yahawashai. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angel with a great sound of trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and the, from one end of heaven to the other. He's after his elect on this go round. That's who his father sent him for. It's not the whole world. They're not involved in this. It's an exclusive what about Luke 4? I think we have one verse here. Line by line, precept by precept. Here a little, there a little. That's how we're supposed to use the scriptures, the Bible. That's what we've been taught. Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. These cold words, meek and poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable acceptable year of the Lord, Yahweh. This is red letter, Yahweh Shai speaking. See? What about Romans? Romans 11. Verse 7, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded, according as it is written, the Most High hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should see, should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way. See, this is like a curse going up. It's repeated in Isaiah, I think, 6 and 9, and Psalm 69, 22. For those who reject the Most High, they hate this word. They prefer lies and become accustomed to them. They love the lies. So, Jeremiah 23, verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock, out of the countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their foes and they shall be fruitful and increase. Let's get a few Psalms here. Psalms 27, I think, verse four and five. One thing have I desired of the Lord Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty 
of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. See, all these are coded messages for when the Most High sends his son and we're protected and kept in a safe place. While all the mayhem and destruction is going on, I think we wanted to stay in Psalms and go to 34 and jump around in 34. I think we start at 17, the righteous cry. And the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Remember those four big words we started with. Extraction and deliverance. Extermination and destruction. Verse 18. The Lord Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He giveth all his bones, not one of them is broken. See, this is uh, another code word here for Yahawashai. None of his bones were broken. This, is, this was prophesied. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. I think we're going to do one more in Psalms 37, verse 39. Where is that? But the, the salvation of the righteous is the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. He is their strength in a time of trouble. I think we could. Wrap up with Ecclesiasticus Sirach. It's <coughs> one last verse here. 47 and verse 22. But the Lord Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish, neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect. And the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob, and out of him a root unto David. See, this is beautiful. We're looking at what's getting ready to take place here. The dual nature. Total devastation that's just around the corner and the most high is sending his son Yahawashai and his angelic army to rescue to extract deliver that's what Yahawashai means he deliverer or savior and who are we the Negroes Latinos Native Americans and the great speckled bird scattered to the four corners. We look like and sound like, we dress like the nations where we've been scattered. And so that's what we're looking forward to. It's frightening the prospects of what's getting ready to take place, but also exciting at the end of this man's wicked rulership is finally coming to its natural end. We've got that scripture we often quote in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9 where it states that this man Esau is the end of the world, the end of the age, the aeon, a specific time period of rulership. He's the end. And Jacob is the beginning of that which followeth. So we won't drag the lesson beyond where it needs to be. We've been listening to extraction, deliverance, extermination, and destruction. Shalom until the next one.